I mean, if Liverpool yeah. are back in the Champions League, Anukash, because I think that yeah, doesn't matter. So you have to talking about back. strikers. Talking about strikers. Uh, Lukaku, I would like to mention because uh, he is someone who you know really came into the fore, at the, especially at the end of the Serie A season. Uh, and uh, for the, I remember when he went to Chelsea, like you talked about Inter players not you know going out in the media criticizing the club. But I remember when he was at Chelsea, uh, he yeah. went out to criticize Chelsea in favor of Inter Milan. So like, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, my question absolutely. to you is, uh, like, what do you think is uh, works with the, with Inter Milan? What sort of culture is there that the players are so loyal to them that even if with, they are with some other club, they miss yeah. Inter Milan? Yeah, because you know, uh, uh, in the semi-final, Hakimi, uh, who was with us, yeah. he was in the stadium, right. and Perisic was in the stadium. So, and huh. these players have just recently left, and you know, if you see their Instagram, they are always talking about Inter Milan. They're watching the matches. You know, they're congratulating. So it's, um, I think we've just had three very good coaches. You know. Uh, Spalletti, uh, the Napoli guy now, uh, he was very good for the for the team spirit. After that, Antonio Conte, the kind of spirit that he built, you know, in those two years, I mean, that man, uh, I know that he gets a lot of criticism, but man, I mean, he built a culture at, at our club in those two years. And, you know, I think that's, it's just a continuation of that. The current coach, he's a bit more, he's not all out there. He's a bit more pragmatic. But, you know, you should see the way they are all celebrating the goal. You know, everybody's running all over the pitch. So, there's a lot of camaraderie. And I think it's just these three coaches over the years, they've built it that way. I mean, starting with Spalletti. So, I think a lot of credit has to go to the club for getting the right coaches. I mean, we haven't always won. With Spalletti, we didn't win anything. You know, we only came fourth on the last day. But he gave us this defensive, you know, this this uh, this strength. I mean, you had defenders like Miranda, Skriniar, uh, De Fry, And they were... They were very physical. I mean, Spalletti's inter was very physical. Conte took it to the next level. Like Conte was so demanding, and I think we've continued that even now. So there's a lot of good spirit, and um, I think that you know, even bench players are given a lot of opportunities to play. Like uh, there's yeah. a lot of good rotation that happens with Simone Inzaghi. I mean, he doesn't mind bringing in Gagliardini or Coria in a Champions League game, and you don't expect players of those levels. You know, like they're they're really not good, man. They're banter players. You know. So for them also to be getting chances, I think everybody's happy. Yeah, and I feel that the fact it's interesting that you put it in this way because I believe that certain players and certain teams in situations they you know uh, prosper more when they are put under pressure. You you mentioned about Barella and how he reacted to all the uh, you know harsh words from the coaches or clubs, and no one has really went out to create any backlash, uh, so to speak, when it comes to the media, but instead have inculcated those changes in their game and, and you know, performed in a particular manner, which also brings back to what I also wanted to ask to Fateh Bhai about Zlatan Ibrahimovic, because I am a bit obsessed about, you know, given that ever since I have started following football for the last three to four years, everyone has had a, has had a particularly... Uh, you know, high regard and just they they are just fascinated by Zlatan. So also, so I just I just want to know more about what you think about that Sweden player. Because you know Zlatan has been the leader in AC Milan's dressing room. Uh, if you saw the way Tonali was crying uh, there, yeah. you know he's been the one who sort of come in. He's got this big personality. He likes to take pressure and he likes to go out and challenge himself. And he's been a great mentor to these young players because AC Milan uh, had a very young squad. I mean Brahim Diaz. Uh, Tonali, Benasser, uh, you know, even in defense, Tomori, uh, Kalulu, Mignon, uh, Theo, you know, these are all young players, Liao. I mean, they're very young. They've never been in, in a Champions League or whatever. So even mm -hmm. though Zlatan was injured this year, that spirit, that mentality that he has, you know, that, okay, look, I am Zlatan, you know, I'm the best player in the world. I don't think Messi or Ronaldo, this, that. I mean, he doesn't hold back, you know, when he, when he has to speak. And I think he's just uh, been a mentor for... For AC Milan and also, you know, they've got, uh, they had like till uh, early today, they had Paolo Maldini uh, as the technical director. Oh, right, I right. Think, yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I can't, I still can't believe as an Inter fan that they've sacked a man who just last year won them the Scudetto, you know, who's brought in guys like Tomori, Kalu, uh, Tiao and, and all these guys. Like, I, I don't know what's happening there because that guy, I mean, he's won what, he's, he's played eight Champions League finals, he's won five and lost three, like eight Champions League finals, you know, like Abhi yeah. Khan, like, Real Madrid are the ones who probably have 13, but even Real Madrid don't have a player who's played eight finals, right? Yeah, I don't think. I, don't so. think. I, don't I think can't so. recall. I yeah. think I think 
Modric might have I'm yes, not eight, but not eight. But yeah, definitely yeah. not Best, a number. We're talking number. about uh, uh, talking about Champions League finals. Uh, we have a Champions League final lined up, and so it's going to be Inter versus Man City, as you know. So uh, to be fair, Fateh, bhai, how do you see Inter squaring up, and how do you think they should be approaching the game? I think that first and foremost, you know, we have to be uh, better defensively. Like uh, there are. I know that you know, like Man City uh, going forward, the way they destroyed Bayern Munich and Real Madrid, we first and foremost can't be overawed in the opening 10, 15, 20 minutes. I mean, I saw those two games, and I think within the opening 20 minutes, you knew in both the games that there is one team that's just, you know, it's it's just too superior. So I think those first and foremost, we have to start properly, probably take the pace out of the game because you know, if we play at Man City's pace, we are done. I mean, look, either Jeko is going to be starting or Lukaku is going to be starting, they are not going to be helping out in defense. Maybe yeah. Jeko will. Jeko does. Jeko does, by the way. But Jeko does. But Lukaku doesn't really offer much, you know. So we've got a problem there, and we've got players like Di Marco and Dumfries who, on the wings, who you know are going to go against uh, Bernardo Silva and KDB and and Riyad Mahrez and uh, who's who's the other one? That's, Jack Grealish. That's a big and list. Yeah. Pace. yeah, those guys are pace. I mean, these guys they don't really have that that level of pace, you know. So I mean, we we have to control the pace. I just feel like we very negative. Uh, don't try anything outlandish. Don't be. Don't try to attack. Be Italian. You know, if you guys remember the Euro 2020 final against England, that was a typical Italian game by Chiellini and Bonucci. We didn't have the talent. We lost to, lost an early goal, I think, to the to the English. But after that, you know, it was a proper Italian game where we made it physical, took the pace out of the game, got a goal, took it to penalties and won. So I'll be okay with that. It doesn't matter in Italy how you win as long as you win. You know, style doesn't matter, substance doesn't matter. Instead of scoreline 1-0 though, that's it. I, yeah, I love it, that sort of football. Yeah, absolutely. And it almost reminds me of the, if if you guys follow cricket, it almost reminds me of the New Zealand test match batting lineup. You know, players like Henry Nicholas and other people. Those are just boring people, but they are effective. You know, nobody likes to probably see them bat. But then what they do really does count uh, on the big stages. And I, my personal opinion around this big, much anticipated uh, Champions League final is that Inter Milan now has a chance to attract the newer, the younger audiences of football. You know, everyone's gonna see, everyone's gonna watch this match because Man City has the chance to, you know, grab hold of that elusive uh, Champions League trophy. But when I was young, I remember getting influenced by teams in matches where I did not initially follow that match for that particular team. It was more in cricket, but uh, for but for football. Also, especially those neutral fans who are like going on with the friends FOMO that, okay, it's the UCL final, City might win and City might do this and that. But suddenly, someone, you know, who's just who watches the 90 minutes and he says that. And of course, I, have, I mean, I have met many young kids. I have met many people my age who just don't want to follow a team just because that team already has so much of following. Ran, and right now, that's the case with Man City in India. So, uh, Anukar, sir, what do you think this Champions League final, what does it hold for the entire footballing world? Well, uh, uh, I think it could be a David versus Goliath sort of a final for me. And uh, honestly, like uh, although I feel that Man City uh, go in as the favourites, I uh, do think should we wait for Fateh? You I mentioned. Think we can always, no, I think yeah. we should wait for Fateh to join. We can always check the post production. Man, he can. Right. Yeah. You mentioned how, uh, you mentioned how Fateh, you know, the David versus Goliath story, and then <laughs> David mentioned, yeah, this is my way of mentioning it, featuring in the David Goliath yeah, story. So anyway, just, huh. but yeah, yeah, are you, yes, yeah, so yeah, continue. Yeah, huh. Yeah, so we'll continue since Fateh. So, yeah. Uh, so, what I personally feel is that it's going to be David versus Goliath sort of a final. And uh, this could be the time when Inter uh, can really come to the fore. Of course, for me personally, although I don't like them, uh, uh, I think Man City go as the f- uh, favourites, of course, because, yeah. of course, they have the uh, side with... They have got Haaland, like, <laughs> simply, I would say that. Uh, because I think that name in itself is a really big one right now. But... Uh, I really think Inter have the spirit, honestly. Like, uh, because I think uh, I think Italian football, what I really like about them is that you know there's a lot of spirit, there's a lot of culture attached to everything, and there's a reason like not a lot of Italian players uh, so go to in you know, other countries in uh, Europe because you know like the best Italian players they usually tend to stay in Italy only, 
and uh, i think nicolo varela as you mentioned is like one of the one of the prime examples of that uh, we had francisco totti some years back i think he was also in okay? uh, right uh, in as roma so i mean of course players uh, like that come with a lot, lot of loyalty a lot of culture a lot of respect uh, they garner from the supporters and i think uh, it could be one of those fairy tale endings for inter milan i'd like to see that even players like hendrik mikitarden who you know uh, have really uh, reignited their career there you get to see that uh, you know there's so much happening for them i think him scoring a goal in the semi final of champions league goes to show that anything can happen in football things can really turn out well like that goes with life also like things can change in the blink of an eye and uh, inter winning here would not only be a statement of intent i think that would uh, just you know Uh, make football as a sport, make the romanticism in the sport come to the fore, grow again on people, because that is the something we as football fans crave for, especially from the neutral point of view, and that is something what I would, which I would like to see. Personally, being what I'd also add is that uh, being a Liverpool fan, <laughs> uh, Lukas is definitely, definitely not a neutral when it comes to City play. So, but he has yeah. put it. <laughs> in a very uh, you know polite and sugar coated <laughs> manner but pate bhai i would like to ask you uh, this question that we have recently started asking all of everyone who you know comes to our podcast and you know even charlotte who was here at the last episode uh, she is from england she is from a club called in the second third tier football but we still asked her about what she feels about indian football and if, 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 even though she like very politely mentioned she never gave it more than two thoughts in her entire life but <laughs> i am going to ask you fatay bhai and rather i am going to ask you to go one step further and tell us all the interesting story that you have regarding indian football which is regarding i think from the last decade not to ma- not to make you seem old or anything like that no, but no, feel- I, I, i am old now but you know <laughs> my my first memory is uh, when uh, jct fagwara had baichum putia in the 1990s and they had yeah. i am vijayan and joe paul and cherry uh, these were great stars of of, of that era star sports got the rights to uh, show the indian uh, but what was it called it was not called i league it was called the indian premier league or something like that like you know okay. uh, i forgot the name and uh, the guy uh, rajdeep sardesai he was the host of that tournament so he used to go to you know he would go to goa churchill brothers he'll go to kerala and you know uh, teams uh, east bengal uh, mohammedan sporting uh, jct fagwara all these old clubs and you know he'd be taking interviews of the players and at that stage uh, star sports used to show a lot of it, uh, asian football like they used yeah. to show the asian champions league the chinese league the japanese league the indian league there was no you know serie a or any of that that started happening when espn came even the epl was uh, i think not on 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 show so i'm talking about yeah. 96 97 so that was my memory and i loved football back then you know i remember india playing kazakhstan and playing so well and you know we played uae and drew nil nil for the world cup qualifiers and That, that was great but i stopped watching somewhere around 2003 4 you know like i i stopped watching indian football and i know that now you know there's a lot of new money coming in but i i miss the old days you know like when east bengal and 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 mohammedan sporting and uh, there were other clubs you know mohan bagan and uh, those clubs mattered and i i can't relate to this modern rebranding you know atletico kolkata and all that like what is atletico i mean they already have Mohan so much bagan team. super giants and all yeah, yeah exactly you know like you i mean calcutta already has like it's the mecca of indian football so itna history hai the maidan and all that and then you know these new names that come in and i can't relate to that so yeah my memories are only from the 90s There's so always think, a spark. There's always a spark in Doi Payan's eyes whenever someone mentions Kolkata or Calcutta or yeah, you know yeah, any yeah, reference to that city. <laughs> yeah, just, yeah just absolutely. Think football, may when it comes to India, I think if you absolutely. have to like if you don't talk about that and if you've not seen that, then what are you doing? Yeah, absolutely. And I also feel so if if like we go one step further. and and ask you at that time you like you mentioned you were really heavily in it invested into following indian football and all those tournaments that you mentioned so in hindsight now that it already has happened what do you think that indian football at that time could have done to you know ensure many people like you the the fateh sahotas in early 2000s would have continued following indian football according to you from purely fan perspective Yeah, it's so beautiful because at that stage, I remember Baichung Bhutia signed for Bury FC in England. 
and uh-huh. that was everywhere in the indian newspapers you know like it was such a big thing for us and it's so sad because he went there he started well and then he got injured and uske oh, baad wow. se you know yeah and uske baad se this image came out okay indian players are not good enough this and that i feel like if at that stage more indian players had gone to europe even if it was the smaller leagues or the lower leagues and they'd done well i think we would have done well as a as a nation and uh, that was an opportunity yeah. that was missed because you know guys like vijayan ancheri uh, the uh, the coelho brothers if they had also gone to europe at that stage with us growing up uh, i think that would have been better than staying back here in india and being you know the big fish in the small pond yeah absolutely uh, anukar sir uh, as we now wrap up this episode i just want to say that the kind of value and quality that fateh bhai has got into this episode not just as a inter fan but as a holistic you know football supporter and he also mentioned about indian football at the end it's it's been a high value episode for anyone who really listens this till the end right yeah it's been the right sort of insightful and the right sort of you know you know enjoyable in that matter in that manner and thank you fateh bhai once again like it's thank been a pleasure you. having you uh it was one of the better decisions of our lives when we you know asked you to come on the podcast <laughs> and <laughs> uh, yeah uh, thank you so much for coming in yeah, here i think it's, a, I, it's an honor and i think you guys should keep growing you know like i see your instagram wala stuff you keep growing like i think uh, keep bringing these international chaps also but i mean it's so good to see you know like we now have a football culture it's because of guys like you you know like a, when i grew up zero culture like i was probably the only one who knew inter milan or you know juventus or bari or brescia nobody knew at that stage you know in the 90s nobody yeah. talked about football so i think it's because of guys like you that the younger generation is taking note and i think that's fantastic keep up the good work that's one of the best compliments anyone has ever given us and i am sure like for the next two three weeks anything and your for girlfriend say won't matter to us especially after you know <laughs> us, uh, you <laughs> appreciate your podcast and you know uh yeah. telling that about us so, so thank you so much again for uh, being here and we really had a good time and hopefully you, it uh, you know gets to win it <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 thank you guys till